This is Bottom Feeder Cinema. I'm Alex, and today I have with me Autumn Forrest. Uh, she's, I guess, a guest host or alternative host. Hostess. Uh, she has a very popular blog called Ghost Hunting Theories. What's the address for it? It's http colon slash slash autumnforestghosthunter.blogspot.com. The movie today is Simon Says from 1999, uh, directed by a man named Kevin Elders. Uh, I did a little research, and the only other thing I could find that he did was that he wrote the movie Iron Eagle, which... (laughs) There was a script? (laughs) I personally like that movie, but... (laughs) Chappie! That's that's about all he did. Um, This movie, I I don't know how much it cost to make, but it grossed $292,000. Um, based on the production quality itself, which was actually fair, it seemed fairly high budget. I mean, a lot of special effects and stuff it probably cost them a hell of a lot more than two hundred ninety-two thousand dollars to make. So they probably took a pretty big loss on this. I'm imagining. Basically, the <laughs> general synopsis is it stars Dennis Rodman as a CIA agent. Yes, CIA. As a CIA mm-hmm. agent in France, who is investigating something that we don't really know. And gets sidetracked when Dane Cook shows up and distracts him with something else that we don't really understand. (laughs) (laughs) That has to do with a kidnapping, but not really. And Dane is a CIA agent, but but not really. He claims to be a CIA agent, but it's established pretty easily at the start that that's complete falsehood. The first, well, we timed it. The first 16 minutes of this movie, there is a huge cast of really disparate, confusing, just absolutely bizarre characters that are established. <laughs> and <laughs> I swear that at some point they just looked at the people that were watching them make the movie and said, put on this goofy costume, yeah. join the cast, here's and be rack, somebody weird. Here's a rack of clothing. Like, just <laughs> take whatever outfit How and just, it? <laughs> just improv, just roll with it. Uh, <laughs> we have um, two monks controlling a robot fly. We have a gang of... Mad Max rejects driving scooters through the streets of France. Wearing makeup? Wearing, like... Uh, like, kiss makeup. Or... I, I would say it's, like, a clockwork orange yeah, makeup. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, <laughs> we have Dennis Rodman, who we're supposed to believe is a respectable CIA agent, and he's got, like, how many pieces of jewelry on his face? Um, I counted five pieces of metal five on his face. Five rings hanging yeah. off his face in different places. And his hair. Oh, let's not forget his hair. It looked kind of like Berber carpet. Yeah, this weird bleached hair, which... Anybody who ever saw him play basketball, I'm sure, is familiar with his weird hair styles. Um, then there's Dane Cook, who's this like guy pretending to be a CIA agent and is like the source of Home Alone-esque slapstick comedy. Yeah, just like a bad tourist. Yeah, yeah. and then there's this sort of tranny-looking Swedish woman. Oh, that's right. Who's yeah, Ro- she's Dennis like Rodman's a, yeah. old flame, I guess, from we don't know when because it's legs. never established. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait! No, there was also a general, and then like oh yeah, oh. and then the most interesting man on, in the world, <laughs> the Dos Equis guy. It's not actually him, but it really resembles him. And then the villain who rides around in an antique car with an Asian chauffeur, and he's like gay. <laughs> he just seems like a really quirky gay guy instead of like a strange and unsettling <laughs> villain. <laughs> In the beginning sequence, there's this weird chase scene with the Mad Max scooter gang, and people are doing backflips for no reason. Um, they're they're chasing the car with the most interesting man on earth in it <laughs> <laughs> to to the docks of who knows where for God knows what reason. And they're kind of provoking him, but not really doing anything actually to threaten his life. Like they're spray painting his car as it's driving, and they're like spraying paint into the cracked window and stuff and he's like oh like there's paint in his face and he gets to the dock and they just drive away because why not who who knows why they're even there and then there's this old time like model t looking car and the gay villain comes out and they're doing some kind of deal over something that we have no idea what it is um and then dennis rodman rides up in this like full yellow body armor thing and it does this real slow pan up his body to the helmet and then he slides the helmet off and it reveals that it's dennis rodman <laughs> like like this is some kind of big revelation you know what i like is that while all of this was happening with the um the motorcycle gang and the cornering the general in the car and everything 
the uh, Dennis Rodman and his two monks have a, uh, a, f- a fly that's a drone, and they're using it to spy on this conversation. Right. But then they one of the gay guys squashes the fly, so it's not helpful anymore. So Dennis just goes down there, confronts the man, and says, oh, I'll talk to you later about this. And I'm yeah. thinking, why did you have yeah. to survey him? And, <laughs> and he says, like, talk to me later. Like, like, like the most interesting man on earth is going to know who the hell Dennis Rodman is, how to contact him. <laughs> and why the fly? Why? 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 That, that's... I, I, the one phrase I found myself saying constantly while watching this was, what in the fuck? <laughs> Every, no. Just scene after scene, I was going, what in the fuck? Well, you know, they, fin- they finish this, this, what they consider to be a really dramatic scene, but then the next day, you're, you're on the beach, and they're... Dennis Rodman is playing bocce on the beach with He's a bunch of French people, ball. and the monks are dancing. It's, I, I'm not the quite monks, sure. <laughs> there's a lot of focus on these monks. Like, they're the, like... Uh, three well, two Stooges humor, and it's just god awful. And like '90s jokes, there's jokes about Hillary Clinton and stuff. And like, it's. I think uh, they just let them just improvise. I don't think they even were given a, lot a script. Of this feels I think they were so they were so they were so bad in the thing that they just said, just make it up as you go. So there's this guy on the beach with his son and girlfriend, and he's acting really. The son looks like he's thirty, and and he's. Like stay where <laughs> stay where I can see you. Like like he's treating the son like he's five years old, and it, they're indicating that there's a reason why that is. But at this point, we have no idea, and it just seems really awkward. So Rodman's playing bocce ball, and then out of nowhere, from the crowd, Dane Cook appears, talking about how they're like long lost friends, and Rodman doesn't recognize him, and Dane Cook's like, "Hey, come help me while I go like make a deal with this guy on the beach." And Dennis Rodman's like, "Okay, like." Random guy that I don't know. I'll right. go yeah. right along with you. And oh, wait, I've got, it. I've got it. it uh, Rodman's hair was uh, cauliflower. Cauliflower. No, maybe breadcrumbs. Um. So, Dane Cook takes Dennis Rodman. I don't know the characters' names, and it doesn't really matter. I don't think they're no. even mentioned more than like twice. I think Dane Cook's character is Nick. No, it's Nick Miranda. I and, wrote that um, down because it was so stupid. They stroll down to the beach where. Suddenly, Dane Cook goes into serious mode, and he's doing some sort of trade with the man in the yellow hat from Curious George. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they brought in these characters with, like, really bright, weird suits that look like somebody just gave them a bunch of stuff off of some set of a really old movie and made them use it. And apparently, he's trying to trade for the girl that the dude's son is with on the beach or something, and they look He's like, oh, where's the girl? Is she safe? And they look, and she's swimming or something, and they can't see her. And so the deal goes bad, and every start, everybody starts fighting each other, and they go into this, like, courtyard, and... <laughs> they this, begin the chasing. That's when the tranny uh, <laughs> Swedish girl pops out of nowhere. At this point, we have no idea who she is or what in the hell's going on or what the <laughs> deal was about or why Dennis Rodman is so invested in this complete stranger. Uh-huh. And yep. there's this karate fighting scene with the girl, and then Dane Cook holds a gun to her and does this really weird, like, unsettlingly long dinosaur, like, T-Rex oh, that's impression. Right. <laughs> I forgot. He puts his little, he tucks his arms up, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, <laughs> and like. There's a woman standing there holding a gun to him, and he's pretending to be a velociraptor or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's just... and it's like. We've seen his stand up, his early stand up from like the late 90s, mm, and that's like yeah. literally straight out of his stand up routine. It's like they just were like, oh, Dane Cook, you're a funny guy. Like, go do yeah. that dinosaur thing you do in your stand up routine. We'll figure out how to fit it into the plot later. <laughs> <laughs> they were too cheap to give him a weapon. <laughs> um, then Dennis Rodman fights the Swedish chick in this like restaurant, I guess. Oh yeah, that's um, right. Oh, that's right. Oh, that had that. I think that was one of my favorite fight scenes because the way it ends. And then it's like romantic, and he's trying to ask her on a date during every pause in the fight scene, and it's like really uh-huh. cheesy and contrived. And th- there's a lot of like cloth usage, like they're using tablecloths to uh-huh. to like grab things and whip things. And... Well, uh, that was my favorite though, because I mean they ended that whole scene. Okay, here's how Rodman ends the fight. He ties the woman up with a tablecloth to a pirate statue. To a giant pirate statue, and then this like Hispanic <laughs> maid walks by. <laughs> and like they have Mexican maids in France. I'm just wondering at what point did they read this script and go, I am so there. I'm going to do this. <laughs> Boom. Next scene cuts to Dane Cook groaning and then it shows him and he's fucking a couch or dry, dry, <laughs> dry humping a couch. <laughs> and I hope it was dry. humping. <laughs> 
You can't really see whether his pants are fully on or not. It was his best acting in the whole movie. That's that's all I've got to say. It and looked realistic. He has the CD that he was supposed to trade with these people to get that guy's daughter back. And Dennis Rodman takes it to his strange monks in the basement of like a the catacombs of a cathedral or yeah. something. Yep. Um, and the monks are like analyzing this and there's like a secret passage through the confessional booth to get to their little catacombs. So Dane Cook shows up in the church and he's looking for Dennis Rodman and he can't figure out where he is. <laughs> and so he starts talking to Jesus on the crucifix. He starts praying, <laughs> praying to the crucifix that's hung up at the front of the, the church. And one of the monks do, there's a, a fat white monk and then this like, cliche black guy monk and the black guy monk there's like a speaker behind the jesus head for some reason and he talks to him over the pa and dane cook thinks that it is literally god speaking to him because that would clearly be the first Mm -hmm. assumption you would make is that it's god talking to you not a fucking speaker (laughs) um (laughs) but then they cue the techno music don't they oh god (laughs) and so they like tell him to do all this stuff and like, oh, jump up and down. Oh, God wants you to do a dance. And then they make him go in the confessional booth and he slides down this chute. And then they like pose in the like dark catacombs and start shooting fake guns at him. Yeah, I couldn't. I'm not quite sure. And what scare that was the about. shit out yeah. of him. And then they like are like, ha ha, gotcha. And it's it's confusing why he they went all this trouble into their insanity. Basically. Yeah. yeah. And there's just constant bullshit with these monks and they're little like back and forth 90s humor and puns oh, yes, and yes. oh my god and all of course <laughs> lots of fat jokes about the fat white monk <sighs> yes and dane cook he's our um home alone uh crook basically that's it, the the whole time he's doing ridiculous the, the, stuff that's stumbling sole, falling yes the sole yeah. thing that propels the plot forward in this movie is home alone style slapstick humor usually revolving around dane cook tumbling down a hill in a trash can or getting slapped in the face or slipping and falling mm-hmm. on something it's yeah. and you expect like dennis rodman you think okay he's going to be the bad guy so they're going to make him all suave and everything but he's absolutely awkward and uh, his i swear his wardrobe was by regis Philbert uh casual and he wear. has this kind of awkward yeah. froggy voice he's not yeah oh he doesn't look comfortable in his own skin but then i wouldn't if my skin looked like that either <laughs> He's got a billion tattoos and a bunch of door knockers on his face. Um, oh, that's it. I think his hair looked a little bit like macaroni art. It, yeah, yeah, it's very macaroni looking. It looked, <laughs> I'm going to figure out what his hair looked like. It was. Uh, it was. I'm going sad. with macaroni. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dean Cook. It, it's taken out of the catacombs. They find out that the girl is kind of. She's like an exchange an exchange student in France, and she's kind of being held hostage, but she's kind of not. And she's falling in love with this dude's son, but the dude's. Like, is the dude holding her hostage? I don't know. Did we ever figure that out? I don't we never know. figured out what the fuck the dynamic was going on here. I, I, I'm not um, sure. And it ends up being that, what, like the gay man is the, the gay, effeminate, uh, lightweight dude is the, the big evil villain. And Yeah, it, they, this, this very <laughs> very good casting. I just want to say great is, casting. <laughs> is the evil villain. The villain with no backstory, no motivation, <laughs> and no clear th- goal of what he's trying to achieve. Um, so... <laughs> They decide that they're going to try to do this deal and get this girl again. So they meet up. Uh, Dennis Rodman's ex-girlfriend, this Swedish tranny, is is working for the bad guy, I guess. One of the bad guys or someone. So they meet up with her in this marketplace. Dennis Rodman puts on a like Chinese like rice patty oh, yeah, worker because, outfit. Like I say, what a six foot seven inch yeah, Chinese a, man. A seven foot black guy in France <laughs> wearing a <laughs> A Chinese rice field outfit with a with a hat and everything, trying to sell like like wooden giraffes, and he's trying to be discreet. And Dane Cook is up in a bell tower, trying to like direct him at where to go because they're gonna, I guess, surprise the girl or who knows what they were trying to do. So he breaks like twelve guys' necks in this marketplace. Oh, that's right, yeah. And and <laughs> and just like props them against things. So yeah, it looks and, like and nobody sleeping. in this crowded marketplace even notices. No one cares. You know. And um. They get into a fight in like a wine cellar, I guess. Oh gosh, yeah, with like styrofoam with wine these barrels. barrels. And this this Asian guy shows up, and this bald Asian guy is like the right hand man of Mister Gay Villain. 